Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. The blurring of lines between the police and the military. Now, historically, um, we can get into the subject of policing and its racial history another time, but uh, the reason why police wear a lot of blue, for instance, is because a lot of police officers, um, as America marched west after the Civil War, tended to wear old Union Army uniforms. Um, this is also why that you have like some similar ranks in police foundations as to the military. So already from the start, the police are this vaguely militaristic part of our society, but in a supposedly civilian role with civilian oversight, ostensibly. And then as police grows in places like the United States, Canada, Britain, Australia, um, it becomes way more of a domestic occupying force. It's less about actually protecting communities and more about protecting property, which is especially true in America because the first sort of prototypical police units were actually slave patrols where they would go and try and find runaway slaves and return them to their masters. And as this goes on and police just uh, protect property rather than people, you know, no trespassing, no vandalism, all this stuff, uh, you get this instance where police start to patrol uh, various neighborhoods that tend to have a lot more minorities. So black, brown, Asian, immigrant, this is how it's historically been. And then shit starts to get weird when the police start receiving extra military gear. Now, this uh, we're seeing it most now with um, the Trump presidency, but this has been a thing that has been around for a long time, and not just in America. Um, our national police force here in Canada, the RCMP, they wear a lot of militaristic gear when you see them over in Afghanistan or when they were breaking up the Wet'suwet'en protests at the Unistoten camp um, or uh, when they were on a manhunt for a gunman in Atlantic Canada a few years ago and also recently. Uh, also breaking up uh, Mi'kmaq protests in Eastern Canada as well. You know, you see them show up with camouflage gear and all sorts of tactical vests and night vision goggles and snipers. It, it, it's a whole scene, right? And it looks like the military, but it's not. It's the police. Various police services get old surplus military armored vehicles to patrol neighborhoods in. As we've seen with uh, most notably the protests in Portland, it's very hard to tell what's a police officer and what's a military person. And for me personally, I believe that this is deeply dangerous because the, there should always be a clear disconnect between police and military. And if we start to blur the lines too much, we start to not notice or be able to tell the difference between a police action and a military occupation. So then it's, oh, well, we love the military, you know, we swear allegiance to the military. Um, and what you see on TV looks like the military, you know, the uniforms, the standing at ease or at attention and with military gear. But now it's in the streets of your city and they're actually police officers. But, you know, we, we need to rise up and re resist against a tyrannical occupation. But wait, no, we also said that we love our troops. How does this work? This is also why you're seeing a lot of people now saying things like back the blue, even though there's rampant police brutality in America. So it's a problem because when you blur the lines between police and military, the distinction between what's protecting your neighborhood, well, supposedly protecting your neighborhood and what's occupying it and how they're being used and who's in command of them and what they can and can't get away with especially with regards to states' rights, and if, say, the National Guard has been activated or not, and the local mayor or the local state doesn't want them there, this is where things start to get very dangerous and very complicated. 
But apparently we don't want to have this conversation in our society about the dangers of providing police with military gear with inadequate training, which results in problems, deaths, grievous injuries, which just results in more people not liking the police. And yet the police are operating with, again, surplus military gear that is overwhelmingly unnecessary. You shouldn't need to treat your own people and populace like they need to be under occupation, like some foreign nation that you've just invaded. And if you do feel that way, that says a lot about you and how you view your fellow citizens. And the fact that we're not talking about this and having this frank discussion about the blurring of lines between the police and their brutality and the military and their purpose as a military and how this is becoming increasingly difficult to spot in today's modern day is what's bothering me today.